Hello. Uh, today we are going to talk about two specific tests. In the last video, uh, we learned four different types of uh, test statistics, how to construct test statistics. But today we apply them uh, to a specific context. The first case is endogeneity test. Uh, sometimes it is called endogeneity test or sometimes it is called exogeneity test. So you will see why the name is confusing. <clears throat> uh, by the way, its reference is um, Bruce Hansen's online econometrics lecture note, uh, chapter uh, subset endogeneity test. So in his lecture note, he he has a section named titled as subset endogeneity test. Uh, my, my lecture note is based on his, so <clears throat> find his if, if you need more references. Uh, the model is we consider a little more complicated model, let me sorry uh, we have three we have three types of variables and uh, assume that we have so x1 is exogenous uh, x2 is not exogenous instead we have uh, on, we have an instrumental variables. As I said before, we have to have an extra assumption uh, so that the model is identified without our hypothesis. Our hypothesis, what we are testing is zero or not. We are not sure about this. This is what we want to test. So we will, we will test without using this assumption. So we will uh, we have to think about potentially it is wrong. So we used to, we are using these. Also then, then just uh, so the dimensions are given by these numbers and we assume that this is what I meant. So even if x3 is endogenous, even if x3 is endogenous, still we should be able to identify this. We should be able, able to identify the regression in, with instrument. So the instrument, this instrument has to handle, has <coughs> must be able to handle both endogenous variables, so endogenous variable and potential endogenous variable. So, and assuming both are endogenous, the instrumental variable has to uh, be able to handle both at the same time so that the dimension, so the dimension, of the dimension of the instrument must be at least equal to uh, both endogenous variables. So then it's now you see the model whether it is endogenous or not. So we are testing X3. So our hypothesis will be stated in this way. Alternative hypothesis. Uh, and in this type of hypothesis, we have to put equality as the null hypothesis. If you change this to, it is impossible. So if you change, if you, you, if you want to use, for example, this is impossible because this is just one point on, so the correlation, this is basically covariance. The covariance between X3 and Epsilon can take any real number, but you are specifically interested in one specific point of that, 
uh, and just one point in a real number is uh, measure zero. It is nearly does not exist. So if you think about continuous random variables, uh, if you assume these are continuous random variables, there the probability that it's it's simple uh, it's it's simple mean equals to zero is nearly zero. So uh, in this case, you cannot distinguish uh, both. So you, you cannot distinguish whether it is like zero or point zero 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 one. It, it is impossible to distinguish that. Uh, so you cannot you cannot reject it. You cannot reject it at all. So anyhow, so if you put it this way, you cannot reject uh, the null hypothesis no matter what you observe. So it does not make any hypothesis testing. You have to put it this way. So, so the null hypothesis is a measure zero set, just one point. Uh, so then it it can be rejected. By the way, the other way, it's not. And in this case, I, 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 I have considered, we have considered four different types of tests. And also I explained they are some, some one may be more convenient than the others. Uh, and in this case, we are using a uh, Haussmann test. Haussmann test is the, the most convenient one in this example. Haussmann test is also referred to Haussmann U test or Durbin U Haussmann test. So this test was, this test has become famous due to Haussmann, Jerry Haussmann at MIT. Uh, but like later people found that similar ideas, already the same idea have been uh, developed independently in other, uh, in other like uh, by someone else like called U or Durbin. I don't know when uh, and how they did it, but so uh, they share the credit among them. So I know it's just name, like any enlist Hausman has some credit. Hausman uh, has, has, has contribution to this idea. So usually he's the most famous among these three. So people call this test as the Hausman test. The Hausman test, so uh, we have to think about restricted model and unrestricted model. In the restricted model, only using uh, Z. So we in the restricted model, we use this and this and this. So we only, we only, cons we assume that this is true. We take our hypothesis as an assumption. So we, it is a restricted, restricted model. An unrestricted model only use this and this. So that is the difference. We, uh, the difference is coming from this guy. So you may use this, uh, um, you may use this or not. Then your estimator may change. Uh, by the way, uh, this is the most general setup, but there may be, there may not exist X1. If you erase X1 from the model, so K1 equals to zero, that is not a problem. But at least in most cases, X1 exists because the intercept term is included in here, usually. Intercept term is always, almost always exogenous. So intercept term is not a big problem and usually it's included in most regressions. So X1, you can think in the simplest, simplest possible case, X1 is the intercept. Um, and But uh, X2 may not exist. So X2 is uh, the variable that is surely endogenous. You, you are sure that it is surely endogenous, certainly endogenous. But if you do every, if every variable is endogenous, there may be no X2. So if X2 does not exist, if X2 does not exist, then the restricted model becomes OLS. So when X2, 
if x2, so if k2 equals to zero, then the restricted model becomes an OLS, uh, 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 becomes a classical linear regression model. Excuse me. Uh, because when x2 does not exist, and if you assume x3 is exogenous, x1, x3 are exogenous, it does not exist, then you don't need any instrument. Even if there is an instrument, still using instrument is more inefficient and it results in the same uh, estimator. Maybe I, I may include that in the homework. Uh, I should have included that in uh, earlier homework, but anyhow, uh, it's on it's a classical linear regression model, so it's easy easy to understand. So, but X3 has to exist because that's what we are testing and we are studying hypothesis testing about X3. So we will think about that. And the restricted model yields restricted model and it yields unrestricted model. Um, Uh, and what I forgot to say here is the dimension of restrictions is K3. We are, we have the, the restriction function is It. So this is the restriction function. The restriction function can be denoted, uh, it, it's defined by the parameters and observed variables. So it depends on beta one, beta two, beta three. But remember, this part is scalar and this is K three by one. So the function is K by three, K three by one, a k3 by one uh, vector valued function. The restriction function is uh, defined in this way. So uh, it's k3 uh, dimensional restrictions. So, and so we have beta, beta r, beta hat u. It is a regression model, yields an IV regression estimator. Maybe you can you can use GMM or whatever uh, estimator, two stage estimator or GMM estimator does not matter. But just assume that there is beta hat R and beta U R, and the test statistic uh, depends on beta u minus beta r. So, and remember if h share is correct, the idea was h share is correct, hat beta u minus hat beta r will converge to zero. That was our, uh, that was our idea because if it is true, if it is true, then this will be converging to the true parameter. And if, even if it is wrong, still it will converge to the true parameter because the assumptions you are using, the assumptions you are using in the unrestricted model is still, they are all correct. So it converges to the true parameter. Also, it converges to the true parameter. They are, from, they are using the same data. They're using the same data, but just different assumptions. And there must be the same true parameter that generate the data. So both are converging to the same true parameter. So their difference will be converging to zero. But if H share is wrong, it will converge to the 
misspecification bias. It converges to the misspecification bias. Uh, and I'm going to call this B, where B is the misspecification bias. So uh, then you can test the idea is you estimate this, you estimate this, and calculate their difference and see if their difference equals to zero or not. So uh, of course it is not zero. So that's our test statistic. Then uh, to do this, uh, to study this, uh, we are going to we are going to inference method. We will basic theory in general. Uh, suppose that <clears throat> we want what we want is. In the end, we want to have so we want this kind of uh, distribution we would like to have this kind of distribution where V is, uh, we may use a bigger V zero comma, we will use V U and V covariance and V covariance V R. So we will think about this uh, distribution under the null hypothesis. So if the null hypothesis is correct, then we want to have this kind of asymptotic distribution where VU is asymptotic variance of beta U and VR is, is the asymptotic variance of the restricted estimator. And VC is the covariance between them. And in theory, then if you if you combine all these results, we know that n times Ah, excuse me, I had to put another. We need this uh, result where V can be written as VU plus VR minus two times VC. So, this is what we are going to utilize. So we need to have the asymptotic variance of this difference. And, and of course it's asymptotic variance. Asymptotic variance is coming from this. And it is easy, I explained this last time. This is a general like variance, uh, variance of two uh, differences of uh, two random variables goes like this. And then finally we have n times hat beta u minus hat beta r transpose hat v inverse hat beta u minus hat beta r converging to chi square k3 where hat v is a consistent estimator for v. So this is the general theory, general theory. Um, and as, as I explained last time, there are two complications in here. Uh, problem first, 
So it's is a little bit more complicated to calculate the covariance. So so because the reason is because remember we are a beta r or beta u are GMM estimator or two stage least squares estimator. So if you ignore this, so just focus on the restricted model. Beta r hat is is a GMM estimator, for example. Then you know how to calculate its variance. Calculating the variance of a GMM estimator is easy. We you did it. Even you could did did it do it uh, in the exam. So anyone can do this. So it is easy. Uh, and similarly, if you think about the unrestricted model, it's another GMM estimator or two-stage least squares estimator, and you can calculate its variance. Uh, that's you can calculate this, so that is easy. So if you calculate the variance of this guy, that is this one. And if you calculate the variance of this guy, GMM variance, and that is this one. And even you don't need to calculate actually in practice, Stata on the program is going to uh, calculate the variance for you. So you don't need to do anything for these two guys, but the covariance is a different structure. You, we never considered covariance uh, in the standard model. In the standard model, it is possible if you consider one a uh, larger uh, method moment approach or larger influence function. So the to calculate the, the covariance, you have to calculate the influence functions of uh, beta r and beta u and then calculate their covariance. It is doable, it is not that difficult, but as you did in the midterm exam, that's quite annoying. Um, so we would like to avoid it. We'd like to avoid it and then use Hausmann equality. Use Hausmann equality, which is which is saying the covariance between beta u and het beta r, the covariance between them is um, variance, the difference The difference in the variances. So that it this is this is the this is easy to calculate because as I said it is it is just v u minus v r and uh, this is v c. So v c is the difference between two easy objects. So v u you calculated v u v u is calculated by the program. V r is calculated by the program. And take the their take their differences. So then V is V U minus V R. It is the result of Hausmann equality. In this case, as I said, it's easy. Right? And second, uh, V may not be V is not V is not um Thing non singular, not invulnerable, let's say. V is not invulnerable. What does it mean? Um, first, the difference uh, necessary and sufficient condition for V to be non singular is that rank of V equals to dimension of V. So column dimension of V, I, I, I'm, I'm saying. So in this case, case, V is K times K matrix. V is a K times K matrix. So where K is, so K is K1 plus K2 plus K3. So beta one, two, three uh, has dimension of, dimension of total uh, K1 plus K2 plus K3 which is K, but rank of V is K3, which is strictly smaller than, strictly smaller than K. 
because the K1 and K2 are missing in, in this. So the team engine is, it is not invulnerable directly. So we have to use generalized inverse to handle this. in general but in this case you don't need to ah so let me give you an example example i i should have gave excuse me uh example i should have gave you the this example last time in the last lecture but i forgot say example say consider uh Think about this regression model. It's a it's a nice regression model, not, not not so strange. And in this example, I will consider a beta two equals to zero. Beta two equals to zero. Then then the then. Think about this, the restricted estimator at beta r will look, look like, will be, it takes this form, at beta 1r, r 1r, I will write it this way, at beta 2r, uh, so restricted estimator also takes uh, two betas, beta one, beta two, but R and zero. Here, there are all zeros. There are all zeros and VR will be, oh, excuse me, its variance will look like variance of beta uh, one R and then zero, 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 for example. So then as you can see, this is not invulnerable. This matrix is not invulnerable at all, not invulnerable at all. So uh, like this problem keeps going. So uh, in, in the end, V is not invulnerable in the final step. So it could be a problem. There is a method called generalized inverse. So the standard inverse matrix does not work in this case. So there is a mathematical theory that says that requires some modification to this. For example, in this case, the, the you have to use, you will, you may use generalized inverse is denoted by this. The generalized inverse is simply this one. So for example, it is in some sense, it is, it makes sense. Just you ignore these guys and just in inverse, take inverse of this guy. But this is not, this is that different from true inverse, standard mathematical inverse. It is called uh, like more Penmore inverse. Some, some, there is a name. Uh, I forgot the name. Penmore, uh, more, it, it, I, I know. So there is an, another inverse. <clears throat> Metrics that will do the same job, generalized inverse in this case. But we are not going, we are not using the generalized inverse in this example because there is an easier way to detour the problem. The, the answer is. The solution is only is only using using only. So the basic problem is coming from this fact: v is k by k dim dimension, but its rank is only k three. So then let's make this dimension equal to k three. 
then it'll be it'll be fine. Then k3 means k3 is the dimension of this coefficient. So let's just compare beta 3 between the restricted model and unrestricted model. That should be enough. That is enough. And that is equivalent. That's what you uh, that's what you need. Uh, and and you can think it this way. Beta 1, the, the point is beta 3. And beta 1 and beta 2 just follow beta 3. If beta 3 is given, then beta 1, beta 2, estimation of beta 1, beta 2 is the same in the unrestricted model and the restricted model. They are utilizing the same assumptions. The, the only difference, the, the, the main difference is coming from beta 3, how to handle beta 3. In the restricted model, beta 3 is a coefficient of exogenous variable. So this is exogenous in the restricted variable, restricted model. So beta 3 is calculated uh, something like on Willis estimator. But in the unrestricted model, beta 3 is endogenous, uh, x3 is endogenous. So beta 3 is coming from some kind of two-stage least square or GMM estimator. Otherwise, these two guys are the same. Uh, and yeah, x1 is exogenous, x2 is endogenous. So the estimation mechanism for these two, uh, for this part is the same in the restricted model and the unrestricted model. So these guys are not the essence of our test. The, our test relies only on uh, beta 3. So then restructure everything. And you, and you can just, you can just put three here, three here, three here, three here. So our Hausmann test statistic is three U, U three, whatever. So this is our final test statistic. So the difference is, uh, difference is now we are using only the third parameter, a third coefficient, which is the, 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 the main variable of our test. And of course the variance we are using corresponds only to these guys. Um, I don't need beta one and beta two. So only take a small part of these and also Hausmann equality also holds for V3. So the covariance between beta 3, U, beta 3 are still hold the same. So we are going to use this test, then, then, then this, this variance, then this variance will, this, this variance, uh, the, the dimension, say dimension of V3 is K3 by K3, and rank of V3 is also, uh, K by three, uh, K three. So it is invulnerable. You don't need to use generalized inverse. It is just standard inverse matrix. So there is no problem. Uh, of course, I had to say under the null hypothesis. Under the null hypothesis, you have the null distribution in this form. It is the Hausmann test. And it is easy, just there is no difference. Estimate the restricted model using GMM or two-stage two least squares and take the third coefficient and its variance. And also do the same thing for the restricted model. Take its thir third coefficient and its variance and calculate the variance using the Hausmann equality. And then take inverse of that. Taking inverse is also the, the program's work. It's not your work. So then multiply them and multiply n. And it goes to chi-square k3. Not a big problem. Quadratic form, uh, quadratic form, uh, test statistic. And just to study what happens, what happens, what is the, um, the asymptotic distribution 
if the null hypothesis wrong? It's a it's a good question. What happens if the null what what happens if the null hypothesis null hypothesis is wrong? Then uh, so we will uh, think about So the difference is here you have misspecification bias. Uh, see, the misspecification bias has, may have different variants. The point here is the the met, the, the misspecification bias exists here. Uh, remember, this is the misspecification bias. The bias does not exist in the unrestricted model. Unrestricted model has no bias, but the restricted model has uh, some bias here. Uh, you have to subtract. It is converging to, so uh, beta r, beta r, beta hat r converges to this guy, beta 0 plus b, so 0 plus uh, bias. So the test statistic So if you think about this, if you think about this, what, where it goes, uh, I, just for convenience, let me write it this way. This is what we are going to use. So look at this. Um, you have to write it this as So you have to put it this way. This B3 is the misspecification bias for beta three. So the reason why I added and subtracted it is because this much uh, I mean, this much is converging to a normal distribution. This is converging to some normal distribution. So I am going to put it as OP, big OP1 minus something. And, let's, and say, and the, in the middle, we have V3 inverse plus OP1. And same thing coming here, uh, here, I have to transpose. Same thing is on the other side, quadratic form. So then if you think about this, it is big O P1, it does not diverge. It does not diverge. It does not diverge. There are, but, but this converges to infinity minus infinity, and this is also my going to minus infinity. So in the end, it will converge to infinity. Uh, so um, it does not matter P or not, so P. So So the test statistic, the test statistic will be converging to infinity. That's why we are rejecting. So thus we reject if T 
key n is too large. So reject the null hypothesis if the test statistic is too large because it will converge to the infinity when, uh, when the null hypothesis is wrong. So if it's too large, reject. That's the idea. Otherwise, it will be, otherwise it will be chi-square distribution. Okay. Um, okay, uh, the first video is done. We'll see you in another video.